Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about glycobiology. Okay, so what is glycobiology? If you look at this word glycobiology, okay, it comes from two words, okay. One is glyco and the another one is biology, okay. So glyco, glyco means sugar, glycans or simply uh, sugars, okay. The meaning of glyco is glycans or simply sugars or carbohydrates whereas biology is the study of uh, living things. So glycobiology is, uh, is the study of the structure, function, biology of carbohydrates also called as glycans. Okay? So this is the definition. So glyco means sugar. So glycobiology is the biology of the sugar sugars or carbohydrate so glycobiology is the study of the structure function and biology of the carbohydrates or simply glycans okay so another important thing is that these glycans now onwards i will call it glycans glycans are present in every living organism okay in every living organism these glycans are present so what is then glycosylation glycosylation is the post translation modification uh, there in, in this process there is the attachment of sugar moieties because it's glycosylation so it will be the attachment of sh sugar moieties to proteins okay to proteins so attachment of the sugar moieties to proteins which is a post translation modification that provides greater proteomic diversity than other post translation modifications so what is glycosylation so basically glycosylation is the attachment of sugars okay or these glycan moieties or sugar moieties to what? To proteins, okay? To proteins. This is glycosylation. So now I'm going to talk about what are the different types of glycosylation. Glycopeptide bonds can be categorized into specific groups based on the nature of the sugar and the peptide bone, okay? And the oligosaccharide attached, yes, which oligosaccharide or which carbohydrate is attached and what is the nature of the sugar and peptide bond, okay, nature of the sugar and peptide bond and the oligosaccharide attached, okay, these actually determine uh, uh, the, the, the glycopeptide bond and based on which uh, there are different types of glycosylation, for example, N-glycosylation, O-glycosylation, see linked glycosylation, glycation, phosphoglycosylation, etc. So N-linked glycosylation, okay, the first category is N-linked glycosylation. So basically here, glycan binds to the amino group of asparazine, es okay, so glycans or carbohydrate, they bind to the amino group of asparazine, okay, asparazine it has N, so the bonds will be with the nitrogen, so this for they are called N linked glycosylation. O linked glycosylation here monosaccharides, okay, monosaccharides bind to the hydroxyl group, okay, hydroxyl group is OH group, right, of serine or threonine in the endoplasmic reticulum, yes, Gol Golgi, cytosol, or also in the nucleus, that these kind of glycosylation is called O linked glycosylation. So basically, in O linked glycosylation, monosaccharides. They bind to the hydroxyl group OH and here we have O, oxygen, right, of serine and threonine. What are the two amino acids? Serine or threonine in the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi, cytosol and the nucleus. This is called O-linked glycosylation. And the third category is glycation. Glycan core links phospholipid and protein, okay, that's called glycation. So basically glycation is links uh, in which the glycan core in glycation what is glycation in glycation involves uh, the linkage of phospholipid and a protein okay uh, with glycan core okay so basically glycan core links phospholipid and protein so this is called glycation okay and c linked gly glycosylation is another type of glycosylation where mannose, okay, mannose, this is the sugar or carbohydrate that binds to the indole ring of tryptophan, okay, the amino acid is tryptophan and indole ring of the tryptophan. So, this kind of glycosylation is called C-linked glycosylation and another type is phosphoglycosylation. 
So here glycans they bind to the serine via phosphodiester bond okay from the name here phospho yes so the bond is phosphodiester bond okay so like i said here the different types of glycosylation okay so the different types of glycosylation they they depend the on on what the nature of the nature of the sugar peptide bond the oligosaccharide attached or the sh sugar moiety or the carbohydrate attached okay so these they determine what kind of glycopeptide bond will be formed and based on this glycopeptide bond there are different types of glycosylation n-linked o-linked glycation c-linked and phosphoglycosylation so here you will see uh, the example of n-linked glycosylation okay this is n-linked glycosylation this is n-linked glycosylation here n-linked glycosylation they are called n-glycans okay they are called n-glycans uh, so as asparazine will be the amino acid whereas o-glycans in case of o-glycans serine or threonine are the amino acids involved okay so these fucose c acid these are the different sugars that can attach to these different types of uh, mm, glycans okay so these are the different uh, um, yes sugar moieties so now glycosylation is really important it's, it's critical it's critical for wide range of biological processes and what are those biological processes for example attachment to the cell uh, including cell attachment to the extracellular matrix okay cell attachment to the extracellular matrix and protein ligand interaction in the cell so the gly glycosylation important why for the cell attachment to the extracellular matrix and protein ligand interaction in the cell this post translation modification or simply glycosylation is characterized by various glycosylate linkages like i said before n o c linked glycosylation glypation yes and phosphoglycosylation like i said before so glycosylated proteins are called glycoproteins okay what are glycoproteins glycosylated proteins in which there is attachment of glycans or sugar moieties are found in almost all organisms okay these glycosylated proteins they are found in almost all organisms okay that have been studied in in eukaryotes in u bacteria in archaea okay so glycoprotein diversity glycosylation increases the diversity of the proteome uh, to a level unmasked by any other post translation modification so thus the cell is able to facil facilitate this diversity because almost every aspect of glycosylation can be modified okay including glycosylated linkage so why there is a glycoprotein diversity why these uh, glycoproteins are more diverse than other post translationally modified um, proteins post mod the proteins that have been modified by other methods of post translational modification because these glycoproteins uh, can be modified at at various levels for example at glycosylated linkase that means the site of glycans there are what is the definition of a glycosylated linkase glycosidic linkase is the site of glycan binding okay the site of glycan binding is glycosidic linkase at this site these proteins can be modified and another thing is glycan composition that means the the types of sugars that are linked to a particular protein this is mannose fucose etc that is called glycan composition okay so this is one way um, glycosylated link is in which uh, you know the, the the protein can be modified glycan composition that means different types of sugars that can be linked to a particular protein and the glycan structure that means the structure can be branched or unbranched chains okay and finally glycan length so it can be short or long oligosaccharides okay short or long oligosaccharides so these uh, because of these reasons you know there is a glycoprotein diversity okay so now another question you might be wondering okay so what kind of proteins are glycosylated okay this is the, this question might come to your mind and the, the answer to this is that eukaryotic proteins in every cellular compartment that have potential to be glycosylated basically eukaryotic proteins in every cell has the potential to be glycosylated okay 
some nuclear and cytoplasmic proteins have O, G, L, C, N, A, C, this N and O glycans are generally pre present in where N and O glycans are present, okay. They are generally present in secretory or membrane proteins, okay. Proteoglycans of the extracellular matrix carry very large glycosamino acid chains such as heparin or heparin sulfate. So, proteoglycans of extracellular matrix carry very large glycosamino glycan chains such as heparin or heparin sulfate. Specific subsets of secretory proteins could have another gly glycan modification as well. Okay. So, so the, the, the okay which proteins are glycosylated so basically and the answer to this is that every protein in the eukaryotic cell they have the potential to be glycosylated okay this is really important so now next next question is is it possible to predict whether a protein is n or o glycosylated okay so this the answer to this question is yes this is possible to predict there are several bioinformatics tools that are available that can predict N or O glycosylation. So, the several bioinformatic tools can be used. So, for example, the oligosaccharyl uh, transferase OST that links N glycans, okay. So, basically that links N glycans to asparagine residue will recognize the terminal minimum sequence. This uh, asparagine serine threonine will access any residues, okay, fine. There are several bioinformatics tools, right, that the uh, that can predict the factor of the prime sequence along with structural features to determine the likelihood of given polypeptide substrate for a glycosylation. For example, net gleek, okay, this is one uh, to predict uh, net and gleek, that is, this is to predict N glycosylation, okay. So, to predict N glycosylation, the bioinformatics tool available is NET net and GLYC. You can actually um, check online about this tool. So, O glycosylation on the other hand is more difficult, yes, we can predict O glycosylation, but the prediction of O glycosylation by bioinformatics tools is more difficult, okay, it is more difficult to predict since any exposed serine or threonine could be substrates for modification because exposed serine or threonine in O glycosylation, we have serine or threonine amino acids and these any exposed serine or threonine amino acids could be substrates for modification. That's why the prediction of O glycosylation is more difficult compared to prediction of N glycosylation. Okay, so prediction of N glycosylation is comparatively easy. But despite that, there are prediction tools that are, there, there are prediction tools that are, are available. And net O glic, this one was net N glic. This is to predict N glycosylation. Net O glic, this is to predict O glycosylation, which are more or less accurate according to the nature of the protein analyzed. Okay, so. The synopsis of the, this slide is that okay, there are there are bioinformatics tools available to predict bioinformatics bio, bioinformatics tools are available, right? Informatic tools are available to predict whether N or O glycosylation. Prediction of N glycosylation is easy, I mean comparatively easy, whereas the prediction of O glycosylation is comparatively more difficult. However, uh, there are bioinformatics tools available that can predict O glycosylation and N glycosylation both, but the prediction of O glycosylation is more difficult compared to N glycosylation. So, and like I said, what are what are the best techniques? Okay, another question would be what are the best techniques that can be used to analyze N and O glycans? The answer to this is that the glycans are neutral or charged molecules with no intrinsic UV absorbance or autofluorescence immunization. In, in emission okay this is important point so basically glycans are neutral or charged molecules with no intrinsic uv absorbance or autofluorescent emission glycans released from proteins can be analyzed directly by by spaec pad that is high performance anion exchange chromatography with false amperometric detection or they are deriv derivatized with fluorescent or methyl groups for subsequent analysis by capillary electrophoresis or liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. So, abundant glycan samples can be separated by TLC, however, the res resolution is poor for complex mixture and large molecules. So, the best techniques, what are the best techniques that are available to analyze NNO glycans? 
so high performance anion exchange chromatography with pulse amperometric detection or uh, this uh, liquid chromatography slash mass spectrometry right so and also the this thin 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 layer chromatography uh, for abandoned glycan samples so these are some of the techniques that are uh, available which can be used to analyze n and o glycans okay so another important question is can we analyze glycosylation with only benchtop instruments and reagents okay so the yes since since loss of sugars alter the molecular weight of a protein the simpler method to determine whether a protein is glycosylated is to follow its migration by sts phase okay the benchtop technique that is available that's sts phase can be used before and after deglycosylation okay with one or more glycos diseases of different specificity so glycos diseases will be used uh, for deglycosylation and what is the base of technique that is available that's sts phase okay and uh, okay so we we talked a lot about glycosylation so what are the different factors actually that affect uh, glycosylation so there are three main factors one is enzymatic availability okay this is one number two is amino acid sequence and number three is protein conformation or availability so these are the three different factors that affect glycosylation so how enzyme availability glycosylation is controlled by moving proteins to areas with different enzyme concentrations the cell sequesters enzymes into specific compartments to regulate their activity for example after a protein is n glycosylated in the endoplasmic reticulum glycan processing occurs in a stepwise fashion by trafficking proteins to distinct golgi cisterni that contain high concentration of specific gly gtfs and glycosidases okay so availability of the enzyme that affects glycosylation okay what are that uh, what what are what can be that kind of enzymes for example the concentration of glycan transferases and gly glycosidases okay these can affect or the availability and or the concentration of these enzymes can affect the glycosylation another important factor that can affect glycosylation is amino acid sequence okay besides the requirement for the right amino acid for example asparagine for n linked glycosylation serine or threonine for o linked glycosylation many enzymes have cons consensus sequence okay many enzymes have consensus sequence or motifs that enable formation of glycosidic bond okay so therefore uh, the amino acid sequence is also important for glycosylation and finally protein conformation or availability of the protein or conformation as uh, as proteins are synthesized they begin to fold into their nascent secondary structure okay which can make specific amino acids inaccessible okay inaccessible for glycosidic binding thus the target amino acids must be conformation conformationally accessible for glycosylation to occur okay so basically uh, here protein conformation is important because if this uh, okay let's say that we have a protein and it folds in a way that it hides here if the, this is the site where um, this structure of this protein actually has hidden this site um, for glycosidic binding so this site will be now inaccessible because this is hidden by this structure so this site cannot be accessed this is hidden so hence the this will limit the glycosylation therefore protein conformation is important so enzyme availability amino acid sequence and protein conformation or availability are three major factors that affect glycosylation i hope this video was helpful thank you very much for your kind 